On today's episode, we're going to try to answer a question that has haunted all of human civilization since 321 BC. That question that has haunted us is this question. Do vintage pedals sound better than modern reissues? Today's episode is incredibly simple. I'm gonna take four classic, coveted, full of mojo pedals that are really expensive, really hard to find, and I'm gonna shoot them out against the modern reissue by the same company, and we're gonna figure out, do vintage older pedals sound better? Could new pedals possibly sound as good as the old ones? We'll know when this is over what the answer is. I'm gonna use the switchback. When you see the red light, it's the OG vintage pedal. When you see the green light, it'll be the new reissue. I have this on the floor. I'm just switching it kind of as an AB looper. Not kind of, that's what I'm doing. Let's get started. The first pedal here is one full of controversy. It's full of argument. It is the white face rat. It gets its name because the logo is black inside of a white box there. So we call it white face. This is 84, 85. And this is supposedly the greatest sounding rat on the face of the earth. And the one that everyone likes, I think because it looks the coolest. We won't go there. And we're gonna shoot it out against the newer Proco reissues that everyone hates on. These get so much hate, it's not even fair. Like, I feel like I need to step in and, you know, fist fight some bullies sometimes, but they get a lot of hate. Now, they're produced a little bit differently, but the circuit's supposedly the same. Uh, so we're just gonna do this. We're gonna see what happens. Here it goes. I've listened to this in detail as I have many times before. And now you've heard it. Here are my thoughts. These sound identical in the musical scenario. When I'm switching, I don't feel any difference. I don't hear any difference. It is the same exact circuit and the same exact sound. Now, one of the things that is frustrating to me about the concept of shooting out pedals when I see other people do it is that the video title will be vintage rat versus new rat and they'll put them up like this and put all the knobs at noon and go back and forth and they don't sound the same well no, no, no. no pedal sounds the same like that you can take two pedals off of the production floor downstairs right now where we're building morning glories and super bolts or whatever and there's parts tolerance meaning that there is a range to these pots they're not perfectly designed it's impossible to make a thousand pots that have the exact same resistance when you move it. So you have to massage the knobs a little bit and like pull things in and get things closer to each other. And the circuit's identical. So you cannot shoot out a pedal like that. That's just point A. So they sound exactly the same if you take the time to find the tolerance and the range. Now, the other thing is, I know a lot of you are saying, what about the chip? The old chip, the LM308, it's so much better than this new crap chip. The chip isn't that important. I feel the knives in my back. I feel you on forums right now, slandering me, calling me names. But you heard what you just heard. Moving on. Next up is a huge, huge classic that a lot of people are emotionally attached to. And for good reason, it is the small stone. There's a lot of vintage versions here. I'm going to use the 75, kind of the OG version, which is more rare, more expensive, not necessarily better, but just kind of cream of the crop if you're going to collect a small stone. And I'm going to put it up against the small stone 4800 phase shifter. This is like the nano small stone. And I see this a lot. How could this possibly sound as good as this? The box is bigger. 
meaning the circuit's bigger. I hear that kind of stuff. So we're gonna shoot this out. We're gonna play some kind of weird, I don't know, Steely Dan meets something. I don't know. What's it gonna sound like, Nick? Like Pink Floyd, Steely yeah. Dan. Yeah, yeah, well, let's, let's do that. Can we merge Pink Floyd, Steely Dan? Let's try. <laughs> They sound really crazy close. Um, this is really cheap, this is really expensive, and the price is really kind of shining a light on how ridiculous that is. Like, you could just buy this one. If you're wanting the sound of a small stone, this is fantastic. Electroharmonics has done a really good job, and they take these reissues seriously. I've done things like the Big Muff shootout to show you that. Um, but I know, as in that video, in the comments, a lot of people said this bigger box style electroharmonics sounds better than this one because it looks better. And I can't fix that. Um, but they sound the same. Um, so we're just gonna, we're gonna probably move on from that and just say it is the exact same circuit. This uses surface mount and smaller parts. This is old parts. And I will say this one other thing. This actually has a volume loss. This is not even at unity volume when you turn it on. So this is actually better. But if you want an older pedal, that's probably gonna break easier and has a problem sucking the volume of your guitar away and cost way more money, this is definitely, I, I would go with this one because this is trash. Sarcasm. This next pedal has caused wars and it will cause new ones as soon as I do this. But I'm embracing the fact that I can't control you, but I can control my choices. And my choice is to shoot out a vintage Holy Grail 1983 TS9 against a cheaper modern reissue that I commonly hear referred to on forums as bottom of the barrel. Uh, we're gonna shoot these out. We're gonna see what happens. Just get your weapons ready and uh, sharpen your knives. Whatever you do when you go to war. Let's let's see what happens. <laughs> I'm not gonna talk about how they sound exactly the same. I'm gonna move on to other things like some of you are asking right now in your mind, you've, you've typed it in the comments and I understand this. I wanna do episodes on this. You're saying, but the chip, but the chip, the chip in the old one is special. The chip in the old one is pure magic. The chip in the old one is the thing of dreams and legend. And the chip in the new one is complete trash. It's not even worth looking at owning. You should pull it out of this pedal and throw it away. Truth is, guys, the chip doesn't have a lot to do with the sound when everything is said and done. The components inside, the tolerances of resistors, capacitors, potentiometers, that is a major difference. So this pedal, I put the knobs in the exact same place, literally, and it held up perfectly. It's fantastic. And I think we need to face that if you're saying this sounds better because you had one, now 40 years ago and your memory of it is that it sounded way better than the new reissue we have to admit as a society and as a people that we don't even know what we ate for lunch monday and we cannot remember the sound of a certain tube screamer 40 years ago at a bar in des moines it's just not possible we have to move on from that and i think not to go on a rant or a soapbox i don't want to do that today but i am going to say these engineers are geniuses 
They want to make this like the old one. Why would they want to make it worse? And they have better parts, better manufacturing, smarter people than they've ever had before. This is not Apollo 11. This is an overdrive pedal. Let's move along. I feel good. I feel good. I feel like there's healing happening. Let's move on. Next up from 1979, I have a Boss CE2 in the box. Here goes the box. It's a silver screw, meaning it is the original version. Very rare, very coveted. It has a lot of dings on it. The paint is scratched. It's beautiful. It sounds beautiful. I'm going to shoot it out against the new Wazacraft CE2W. This is from 2018. It is where Boss recognized these vintage units that they have. They re-released them in a reissue form and put in some different modes. I'm going to put this on the standard mode where they are replicating this and we're going to see what happens. And I'm really excited, like seriously excited. <laughs> tell a difference as the player behind the amp. I can't hear it in the mix. These are fantastic. Like, go look at the Waza line. The vibrato is going on one of my boards at some point. Um, this chorus is fantastic. And it has modes that this doesn't have. They have the CE1 mode in here. They have another. It's just really, really great. Now, again, some of you are wondering, what about the chip? What about it? I don't know. They still make the chip for chorus, so... We could get hung up on it wasn't made in a certain factory with certain dyes by certain people when the weather was a certain way. I don't know. We can go there. People do that. It's fine. It's a hobby. I like hobbies. We can all have hobbies. It's a free country. But, and the internet's a free country, sort of. But we, we were going to move on from that and just say these are really, really good. Now, one other thing I hear, and I want to approach this here in defense of Boss, because I love Boss. But the Wazacrafts have a different buffer in them. They change them. Okay, yes, because you complained about this for 30 years. So they changed it, and now you don't like it. So we, we can't have everything. We can have good things, and this is a really, really good thing. Yeah. All right, let's, let's wrap up here. I want to say, first of all, you saw the truth. I want you to take a breath with me. Let's take a deep breath. Exhale. And just let the truth hit you like a truck. Just let it wash over you. Let it crush things that you believe. It's fine because now we're better people. We now know that pedals are not hard to reissue. They're basic electronics. We also need to know and understand, and I think we do know now, Designers are really smart and they've only gotten smarter. And most of these classic pedals are from the 70s, so we've had decades and decades to improve methods and get even smarter. So of course we can replicate it. It's like no one says they can't replicate someone else's cheeseburger from 30 years ago. So we have learned that, we've moved on. And everything's just easier, period. And I wanna say this one other thing. I really, really care about you guys. And I know I'm probably a little saucy today, but this stuff bugs me because I think a lot of you waste your time, you spend money, you go around in circles. Don't do it. These reissues are great. Most all reissues on the market are fantastic. Buy them, plug your guitar in, go out to an amp, make some music, make some art, and have fun. That's what I've been trying to say, but I got a, I got a little a little crunk, a little over the top, and I need you to say, you forgive me because I'm saying I'm sorry. I did this for you because I care about you, and we're gonna listen, we're gonna go over to record time and listen to music maybe, I don't know. On May 13th of 1985, I was 2.8 years old and Dire Straits released Brothers in Arms. It's a record that I think 
gets overlooked from the guitar perspective. Now, Mark Knopfler is awesome and everyone knows Sultans of Swing and everyone knows track two on this money for nothing. You know, we got to move those refrigerators, that whole song. Well, this is full of other amazing songs and one of my favorite songs from the 80s period and one of my favorite guitar songs is Brothers in Arms, the last track and the title track. So check this out. And you may be a big fan of this because it was popular, but it hasn't held on in popularity. So yeah, and this is a reissue of the vinyl. And if you have an original, it probably sounds way better because they don't know how to do vinyl anymore and they keep reissuing this. But that's another subject because reissues aren't usually as good, I don't guess. That's what I've heard. Anyway, check it out. Let me know in the comments if you like it. Thanks so much for watching this episode. I hope we're still friends. Like, I know you're cool and I hope you think I'm still cool. I know, you know, it got a little rough. Like, I've I've really released a lot of my inner demons through this episode. And I hope it made your day better, maybe. I don't know. If you like the episode, like it, subscribe, or don't. I don't know. Hit the bell icon or don't. I, I just want to be a little more passive because I was so aggressive in this episode. Um, there's this place you can buy shirts and stuff, jjshow.com. There's a Patreon link below. I don't, I just want you to know that I appreciate you and I went a little overboard again. I'm just saying I'm sorry. I'll see you next week, maybe. I mean, we don't have to. You don't have to show. You can do another. It's fine. Let's just, let's turn the camera off, Dave.